Hey guys, what's up? It's Eiflin here, and welcome back to Warframe. In this guide, I'm going to be covering everything that you need to know for a returning player in 2024. We'll be talking about the Angels of the Zaraman, Veilbreaker, the Viri Paradox, and the Whispers in the Wall. So whether you've been away for a few months or a few years, this guide will help you get back up to speed. First things first, the New War was a major expansion that changed the face of Warframe. It introduced a new story, new characters, new enemies, and new ways to play. So if you weren't around for its release, you're going to want to check it out as it's a prerequisite for everything that we're going to talk about in today's video. We're not actually going to talk about how to complete the new war as I've covered it in previous videos so if you need help with something like getting a necromech or a realjack for example check out some of my older videos to help you get new war ready. After the new war quest we have to complete the angels of the Zaraman quest which grants us access to a new hub area the Zaraman. It introduces new enemy types, new gear and new powerful weapons known as incarnum weapons that are currently the go-to meta weapons within Warframe. An example of a crazy incarnum weapon buff would be the Devouring Attrition evolution as the fifth evolution on the Fenmore. It grants 50% chance to deal 2000% damage on non-critical hits. The first thing you want to do upon returning to Warframe, implying you have the new war quest completed, is complete the Angels of Desiremen quest and increase your standing with the faction known as the Holdfast located in the Chrysalith. To increase your standing you must collect a resource known as Void Plumes. You get Void Plumes by running Zaraman bounties but you'll also need more uncommon plumes to trade in to actually rank up. To get these, you have to do a combination of searching the Zarman Tal sets for plumes scattered around the place and killing the Void Angels that spawn in during Zarman bounties. Zarman Void Plumes can be bought for resources from Archimedean Yonta as well, one of each on an 8 hour rotation. You should run your favourite Warframe and weapons, and as long as you have something other than the default amp for your operator, you're going to be able to take down the Void Angels just fine. Another important resource to farm within the Zarman missions are Entrati Landforms. You can easily farm these by running Zaku with a Box Breaker build that looks a little bit like this. I've went ahead and subsumed Mag's pull ability with the greedy pull augment to make sucking up loot even easier. You don't want to accidentally miss an Entrati Landforn as they're a pretty rare resource. If you're running this build during your Zarma missions for the Landforns, press 4 every so often and then use pull to get as much loot as possible. The Zarman actually has one of the best missions in the game for farming some really powerful arcanes that will change the way you mod your frames moving forward. The game mode is known as Void Cascade as it spawns in many frax enemies that drop the newer arcanes. These frax enemies have to be taken down via a combination of normal warframe and weapon attacks and then some attacks from your operator's amp. The more you play the easier this is going to get. If you run a mod drop chance booster or play this mission in steel path you're going to get many more arcane drops as arcanes are affected by the mod drop chance booster. The arcanes that you really want to look out for are known as molt augmented and molt efficiency. Molt augmented increases your ability strength and molt efficiency increases your ability duration. It's important that you play the Zaraman a lot for the arcanes and the standing. You're going to need the standing to get access to the new Incarnan weapons from the NPC known as Cavaliero. This is also who you will go to to apply Incarnan adapters that you get from another game mode that was added into the game called the Circuit. I recommend picking up the Fenmore, Latum, and Enodum as your first few starting Incarnan weapons. You gain access to the Circuit after completing the Daviri Paradox quest, which is available at the very start of the game. The Circuit is an important game mode for both beginning players and more experienced players players as it can reward new players with entirely new frames and more experienced players with more powerful incarnate versions of weapons in steel path mode. The circuit is an activity that you complete on a weekly basis so you have the entire week to gain 10 circuit levels to collect all of the rewards in the difficulty that you choose. You're forced to use a random loadout in the circuit. You get to pick from a random set of frames and weapons each time that you load in. As you complete objectives in the circuit you're granted decrees that you can pick from which are applied to your loadout for that one run which is going to make your loadout stronger until you leave or fail. While playing the circuit you will earn drifter intrinsics which can be spent to make your life in the circuit and the Viri easier. If you'd like to really hammer out a farm for drifter intrinsics I recommend playing the Daviri experience, completing objectives and finding collectibles. The Crees are also present in the Daviri experience as well. It's an endless mission so you can amass a ton of the Crees and become really strong and everything becomes really easy. On top of that you also need resources located in the Daviri experience to apply incarnate adapters to weapons that you already have so you may as well run the Daviri experience for intrinsics anyway. If you're doing content within the Daviri Paradox, make sure to always leave through the portal so all of your progress is saved, but if you want to use the pause menu to get out, make sure to get a decree so all of your progress is updated and not lost. My friend Winter made this mistake where he didn't get a decree before quitting with the pause menu and he lost all of his progress. F in the comment section for Winter. Next up we have the Veilbreaker quest. This quest is important to complete as it gives you access to a new vendor in your orbiter called Chipper. 
Chipper sells new Archon mods, which are new, better versions of mods that you already use, such as Intensify, Continuity, Vitality, Flow, and Stretch. Each of these mods are a must pick up from the Chipper vendor, but to unlock Chipper and get to the rank so we can buy the mods, we have to do Cal missions. You have to complete at least one Cal mission for five weeks to achieve max rank with Chipper, which hopefully DE changes in the future. During the Cal missions, you have to pick up a resource known as Stock that just randomly is laying around. This is the resource that you're going to trade in to Chipper to purchase the new Archon mods and probably more importantly the blueprints for a really powerful frame known as Styanax. Styanax is a must pick up frame as there's not a single game mode in the game that he can't be used in. His 2 is one of the best armor stripping abilities in the game, his 3 regens energy and shields for you and your squad and his 4 is a mini nuking ability where you throw many javelins at a group of enemies and deal tons of slash damage. His 4th ability also has an augment mod known as Intrepid Stance which grants over guard to you and your squad for every javelin that hits an enemy. You can get Intrepid Stand from the Arbiters of Hexus or New Luka at rank 5 for 25,000 standing or you can get it for 15 platinum from Warframe.market. It is in fact called Intrepid Stand, not Intrepid Stance, I just misspoke in the last little clip. Overguard is a new broken mechanic that was added into Warframe that makes you completely knockdown immune, status immune, and is a health bar over the top of your health bar, which can instantly be refreshed with a press of a button. Overguard combined with shield gating combined with rolling guard makes you basically invincible. Speaking of broken, another broken thing in the game now is Grendel's helm of ability, Nourish, and while it's true that it was recently nerfed, it was just a number adjustment to make it a little bit less broken. It's still an insane ability as it grants you more energy regen and applies viral procs to the enemies around you. It's worth throwing Nourish on a lot of your frames over their not so great abilities. I recommend throwing it over Styanax's 1 and running the build that looks like this. If we want to make our frames even even more powerful, we're going to want to pick up Archon Shards, and the first way for us to obtain Archon Shards is via Archon Hunts that we unlock after completing Veilbreaker. Archon Hunts are somewhat difficult, but if you picked up an Incarnum weapon and Styanax with his Augment, you'll be able to run them just fine. I recommend picking up either the Fenmore or Aladim from Cavaliero and running a ton of base damage, multi-shot, and radiation damage. You can run them way more efficiently with Titania using a build that looks like this with Saku's Helm of Ability over her third. You want to run a Dex Pixia build that looks like this and you're going to melt Archons in no time. Archon hunts are a weekly activity so you complete one Archon hunt per week for one shard then you have to wait for the next week before you can do it again. Soon after you've dabbled in the Zaraman, the circuit, Cal missions and your Archon hunts you're going to want to complete the Whispers in the Walls quest. This quest is going to introduce you to the new story beats of Warframe and unlock another hub area and tal set on Deimos. The new hub area is called Sanctum Anatomica and is home to the Cavia Syndicate. Ranking up your Cavia standing is a lot easier than ranking up your Holdfast standing. All you have to do is run bounties that are given to you by this talking fish. There are new game modes in this area, but they're all pretty self-explanatory. Scattered around these missions, you're going to find a resource that you can pick up called Voka. Pick up as much of this as you possibly can, as you're going to need it to progress through the Cavia ranks by trading it in once you max out your standing. Ranking up with the Cavia is important as it unlocks many more ways of acquiring Archon shards and even gives us the ability to merge our shards into to different ones or make them more effective. We're also able to purchase new powerful arcanes for our melee weapons from here as well. If you talk to this talking cat, he's going to let you run another weekly game mode called Netracells, which you can complete five times a week. You've got a chance to get in an Archon Shard at the end of each Netracell run. You'll be able to easily complete this with Styanax just by keeping Nourish and his free active and then spam it as four. Once you hit rank five with the caveat, you'll be able to come to this talking bird and purchase one Archon Shard per week for 30,000 standing. The talking bird is who sells the melee arcanes and helm of segment that allows us to upgrade our archon shards. Once you get here, I recommend prioritizing the Arcanes and Helm of Coalescent segment instead of the Frame Corvax. Within the Sanctum Bounties or missions, there are many new enemies that drop many new mods such as Radiation Damage mods. These mods are nice to haves that greatly increase your damage and utility versus enemies weak to radiation, which usually happen to be the stronger enemy types in the game, so keep your eyes peeled for more rare mod drops while you're playing these new missions. Some of the tougher enemies in these missions drop another version of Intensify called Precision Intensify, which greatly increases the strength of your fourth ability. This mod is a must-have for ultimate spamming frames like Cyanax. There is also Tenokai. Tenokai is a new gameplay mechanic or type of mod that you can equip to your melee weapon's Exilus slot. Tenokai mods have the ability to invoke Tenokai. With Tenokai enabled, melee hits have a 15% chance of flashing a sword icon on the reticle for two seconds. 
Performing a heavy attack or heavy slam during this flash increases its wind up speed and does not consume combo counter. Tenokai mods are rewarded from the rotation C of Alchemy Missions, which is a new game mode within the Sanctum or Sanctum Bounties. Last but not least, there is a new Fisher game mode called Omnia Fishers, which allows you to run any relic type on the newer tile sets. This makes farming prime items a lot more chilled and I guess easier as you can get an entire prime set in the one run. And that is pretty much it. If you focus on all the things that I covered in today's video, you'll be all caught up in Warframe in no time. I'll be releasing more focus guides on all of these topics in the future. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.